the escape artist. Oh, my dog, the escape artist, Tyler Cornelius. Toastmasters, have you ever had a moment where you thought to yourself, you know what, hindsight is 2020. <laughs> True, we've all had it. It always happens to us sooner or later. I had one of those moments, but it came to me in the form of a little furry creature with a tail and ears. <clears throat> Our family got a beagle. We never had a dog. We always had cats, you know, hamsters, that kind of stuff. Got a dog. Got this cute little baby, not babies, you know, kind of a larger puppy, but still, cute little beagle. Brought it home, we're all petting and playing with it. My, me and my mom and my sister just loved the heck out of this dog. It was a great dog. First day we had it. Later on that night, we had to go, you know, get some food for dinner. Uh, I was in Washington State at the time, so it was probably raining outside, you know. <laughs> who would have thought? So we're thinking, we'll leave the dog inside, you know, so the dog's gonna get cold or wet when we're gone. So we put the dog inside, we go to the store, which is just down the street, you know, get our food for the night, you come back, you know, we're ready to make some dinner. You know, we pull up, park the car, get out, we see, you know, the dog in the yard, you know, well, I guess, well, I guess the neighbor's got a beagle too. Hey, mom, we're <laughs> we need the, we need the dog, dog Weezer. I'm like, mom, go get Weezer, we'll make, make friends and everything. So mom gun goes around the garage, and I'm going to alert to the dog. I'm looking at the dog, it looks just like the hard dog. <laughs> and I'm like, hey. you know, I look up, I see our window. <laughs> Blinds are hanging out the window. The screen window is hanging out the window. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and okay, after a while, like, you know, when you have a pet, their face speaks to you. They can't talk to you, but when they look at you and they have a look on their face, they tell you something. I swear to God, that dog's look was like, where'd you go? <laughs> like, okay, this is blind, so the screen window, we'll fix it, no problem. So we bring the dog inside, I'm like, hey, we gotta, we'll do something, that we'll, I guess we're gonna keep the dog outside. So I'm thinking, okay, we got a fence, man, it's fine. You know, next day we go to school, my mom goes to work, come home, dog's gone. I'm like, <laughs> Go. <laughs> so I'm searching around the yard, looking around behind the shed and everything, and there's this, there's this trench uh -oh. under the gate, and it's like this five foot trench, like two feet deep. I'm like, that dog's a freaking bulldozer. <laughs> it's like, it's like it could be Alcatraz. He could, I don't know. But, so we're like, hey, we gotta do something else. You know, come home, uh, search the, you know, search the neighborhood, can't find the dog. Have one of our neighbors call us up. Hey, I think your dog's over here. It's fine, she's just playing with the kids, she's having a great time, you know, come get her when you want to. I'm like, I'm like okay, we're out there, go get the dog. So I'm thinking, okay, what do we gotta do? Oh, well, she's gonna dig out of the fence, we gotta, you know, kinda chain her up or something. So we get one of those, like, you know, three foot corkscrews you put in the ground. So I get that, come home, turn it to the ground. I realize you had to be Superman to put it in the ground, first off. I think I was probably hitting a rock or something, I'm not sure. <laughs> but either way, I'm thinking, you know, you know, tie the dog off to that, you know, rope, chain, you know, collar, good to go. So, come home the next day, dog's gone. <laughs> I walk over there, the torch screw is still on the ground, follow the rope, rope, shoot in half. <laughs> go to the corner where the hole was, the hole's there again. I'm like, okay, jeez. Got to do something else. So I'm thinking, okay, well, dog bit through the rope. I'll get chained. So, go to work, school, come back home. Dog's gone. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so I walked down where the corkscrew was. It's gone. <laughs> so, I'm not sure this happened, but in my mind, the dog figured out that if you go backwards around this way, <laughs> 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 okay, we gotta do some videos. So we're thinking, yeah, of course the hole's still there. So, you know, we're thinking, okay, what are our other options? Okay. Electric fence. I know they have one of those electric fence things for dogs, you know, where, like, they get too close, it kind of zaps them and scares them away. I'm like, okay, we'll, we'll try that. You know, maybe that'll work. So, get the whole system, you know, buy it. I put the wire on the yard and everything. I'm like, thinking it's, you know, it's probably good to go. But I'm thinking, you know what? can't shock my dog without knowing what it feels like. Oh. No. <laughs> so, uh, no, I didn't put the collar on. <laughs> I have the collar. I have it in my head, I have my two fingers on the prongs. 
I'm like, okay, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna do this. And I stop and think to myself, like, I'm gonna voluntarily shock myself. <laughs> Stupid, but I'll do it anyways. So I'm getting closer, I'm like, I'm not sure how close, you know, you get to the fence before it's <laughs> It shocks the heck out of you. <laughs> and I had no idea, was that strong at all? Until so I tried it out, I'm like, oh, that's, that's, uh, I feel guilty. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, we gotta keep the dog in the yard somehow. So I put the thing on the dog, and, you know, we put her outside, we're all inside watching her, see what happens, you know, windows open so we can hear, dogs kind of sniff around, gets close to the fence, screams, Aww. the dog screams, and like, I almost instantaneously started crying, I'm a softie, and I was like, oh my god, I can't do that, <sighs> but, so we, forget, forget that idea, <laughs> so we didn't do that. I can understand that hurt like a son of a um, sort of thinking, okay, well, if the dog can't course her to the ground, <laughs> digging out the holes, okay, so we're going to start putting stuff in the holes that she's getting out, because there's two other fences on the other side, so if she digs under one fence, she goes into the neighbor's yard where there's another fence, so she'll probably still go to the same places. So I tried one day, we tried putting in, you know, giant rocks, you know, in those holes. She just digs between the rocks and it work. <laughs> We tried, uh, we tried pounding rebar stakes like two and a half feet in the ground. That did a pretty good job, but she would kind of get around them in the corners and everything. We put down a concrete, like, ditch moat thing <laughs> about two feet into the ground the entire length of the game. She just kind of still dug around that. And this, I don't, I don't know what to do. And it wasn't, it wasn't too big of a deal. I mean, all, our neighbors loved the dog. She just could not be by herself. She had to go see the kids, get fed. She was the happiest dog in the world. But every single day, we'd have that answering machine call from one neighbor or another saying, hey, your dog's over here. You know, it's fine. Take your time. Just come over and get more if you want to. But we got one call one day. One neighbor who we never spoke with before, very mean guy, said, your dog was in my rose bushes. If I ever see that dog outside again, I'm going to shoot him. And I'm not happy about that. <laughs> so I'm thinking, okay, we got to step up this, you know, somehow or another. And we, we ended up having to just basically, you know, line the entire yard with just rocks, rebar, <laughs> everything you can possibly imagine to keep this dog in the yard. And that thing that I mentioned to you guys earlier, the whole hindsight is 2020. I should have named the dog Houdini. Thank <laughs> you.